Hey guys, welcome to my first drive video on BMW's i4 eDrive 40. A couple of months ago, I got my hands on the flagship i4, the M50, and that video has done almost 200,000 views. There's a link to it up here. I go into a lot of detail about the i4 in general in that video, so it's worth watching. I wasn't that impressed with the car overall, but there was a few real standout features to it. And I think a lot of people got the wrong idea about what I was saying. I was just being very honest, as I am in every video. And it's no secret that EVs don't get me too excited, but they're definitely getting better and better. But that particular car, rather than being Jekyll and Hyde, it just didn't suit it having all that power it just felt way too heavy and when you pushed on it felt a bit unwieldy a bit out of control almost but as a car the m50 made a lot of sense it got me from a to b in comfort and quietness the range was pretty good for an ev of this size and i was really impressed with those aspects of that car and I think I finished that video by saying this eDrive 40 model should be the pick of the bunch. It's lighter, it's cheaper, and it has a bigger range. But obviously I hadn't driven it at that point, and today I've got my hands on one for only a few hours. As you can see, the weather is absolutely dreadful outside, and that's why I'm doing the intro from inside the car. Hopefully the lighting is all right. I've even got my LED uh, light out to help you see things in the cabin because it is just really dreary out there. This i4 eDrive 40 is rear wheel drive only. Unlike the M50 that we tried recently, that's an X drive. So you've got electric motors on the rear axle and on the front axle. This one just has it on the rear axle. Now that is a good thing because it saves about 160 kilos. That's two average size male adults that have been thrown out the door so it should feel a lot better it's still 2.1 tons though it's no lightweight but that's a substantial weight saving that also means that this car has a longer range bmw claim on the wltp cycle it'll do about 350 miles when i jumped in it this morning it was fully charged it had 290 miles showing it's relatively cold today. Uh, it's not ideal conditions and this car, well, it's only done 2000 miles. So it's only had a couple of charge cycles. So I reckon when this is six months old, you could realistically probably see just over 300 miles in better weather and slightly warmer conditions. The eDrive 40 starts at 51,900 pounds on the road here in the UK. That's for a sport trim. This is an M sport trim car. It's about 53 and a half grand so it's only 1600 pounds more i can't see anyone going for the sport trim when this is just such a fraction more expensive and it's probably got better residuals than the base model and this particular press car has about 10,000 pounds worth of options thrown at it including that beautiful san remo green paintwork which isn't popping much in this weather it also has a visibility pack which is essentially laser lights which i absolutely love because i live out in the countryside and they're very handy uh, it has the tech plus pack and it also has the m pro pack i believe it's called so yeah it's got all the toys you need all i4s have this new curve display which we find in cars like the ix which i recently had on the channel and it is very nice. I think the only downside to it, as I talked about in the M50 video, is the fact that all of the climate controls, etc., are now on the screen. So there's no climate buttons down here. It's all relatively easy to use. And the more time I spend with it, uh, the more intuitive it becomes. But there is a lot going on uh, up here. But thankfully, you can still use the iDrive controller to control the majority of it. Um, and I'm sure over time it'll become a lot easier to use um, than it is for me right now because I'm still <laughs> acclimatizing myself to it all. But it's all very clear. You don't get any reflections um, and it does make the cabin look really, really modern. In fact, this curved display is going to find its way into the LCI 3 Series, um, the LCI 4 Series Coupe. 
and I'm sure it'll be in the LCI M3 and M4 when they eventually come out too. This car also has one of BMW's fantastic head-up displays, which I'm sure is part of the Technology Plus pack. It also has the all-important UK option, which is the adaptive suspension, and I believe that is part of the M Pro pack. So make sure you consider getting that because it does make a big difference to ride quality, which we'll talk about shortly. I wanted to briefly interrupt this video to tell you about the Roadster app. This is a social networking app for us motoring enthusiasts. I first saw and heard about the Roadster app via my good friend and fellow YouTuber, Steph ABTV. He was holding car meets and drives every month with an amazing bunch of like-minded enthusiasts. A couple of months ago, I decided to join him on one and I absolutely loved it. So much so that I have now joined forces with the Roadster app team and I'm going to be organising my very own car meets and drives every six weeks or so. And in fact, my first Roadster app drive will be taking place on the morning of Sunday, the 13th of March. All you need to do is download the Roadster app, which is free and available on the Android and on the iPhone. Search for me, Joe Achilles is my username, and join that particular drive. We'll be meeting up somewhere near Bista, all the details are on the app, and we'll be finishing that morning drive at Caffeine and Machine and hanging out there for a couple of hours, grabbing coffees and talking cars. If you do decide to come on that particular drive, make sure you also buy a parking ticket for Caffeine and Machine, they're nine till 12 slots, because you won't be able to get in otherwise. So hopefully I'll see lots of you on that particular drive or on future events and drives throughout the year. There's lots of things going on on the app. It's not just meets, there's lots of car clubs and specific car brand clubs, etc. While I'm on that, you don't have to have a BMW to join me on that drive, but I will have my brand new M3 competition. So you'll be some of the first people actually ever to see that car. So it'd be really exciting. And I can't wait to drive that car and I can't wait to host that event. So hopefully see lots of you there. Remember to download the app and search for me. There'll be a link to it in the description below. Let's get back to the video. The M50 has over 500 horsepower. So it needs its X drive to get all of its torque and power down to the tarmac, especially if it's wet like it is today. This 40 model has a modest 340 horsepower and the torque figure is really modest, 430 newton meters, a lot less than I thought it would be, although it feels like it's a lot more. And that power and that torque figure are a perfect blend for a rear wheel drive car like this because it weighs just over two tons, it gets its power and torque down like really well, like perfectly well. You can just feel the rear tires chirping a little bit on the surface, but otherwise it doesn't feel overwhelmed and it feels a lot quicker than the 340 horsepower suggests. But again, that's just typical EV because in your combustion engine car, you might have 340 horsepower, but that's only available in a small section of the, let's say, rev range, whereas in EVs, it's pretty much available the second you put your foot down. So it feels really, really fast and a lot quicker than BMW's claimed 0-62 time on this, which is 5.7 seconds. This feels like a sub five second to 60 car to me. Unfortunately, I don't have my race box time and gear with me today and it wouldn't have been fair anyway because it would definitely get a little bit of slip off the line in these conditions but hopefully I'll get my hands on one of these for a week very soon and we can test out acceleration times etc then. One of my real highlights of the flagship M50 was the ride quality and just how pleasant that car was to use if you're getting from A to B and this 40 model 
well, it feels even better. Instantly, I can feel that it's lighter. There's more steering feel, the car feels more agile. It doesn't feel as, let's say, fat <laughs> as the M50 does. It really doesn't. This is exactly the same road as well that I took that M50 along, so it's like for like. This car feels far more like a combustion engine three or four series than the M50 did. That felt very fast in a straight line, but just lardy and a bit out of control when you started pushing it hard. This feels great. And like I said, with that power and torque available immediately, it's a lot quicker than the figures suggest. Let's put it into sport because this car has the adaptive suspension box ticked. Well, I can feel the suspension stiffen up immediately. In fact, I can feel pretty much every bump in this road. Steering feels a little bit heavier and the throttle response is even sharper. Let's just throw it into this right-hander coming up here. Feels really good in the brakes. It just feels really nice. I'm really impressed with this car. To me, this feels like the sportier car compared to the M50, and that's what my inkling was when I drove that car. It just felt like it was trying to be something that it wasn't. It really just felt too heavy and just not particularly fun or dynamically good on one of your favorite roads, whereas this, well, it only takes you a few hundred meters behind the wheel to feel that it just feels a bit more agile, it's 160 kilos lighter, but it feels like it's three or 400 kilos lighter, and I'm not exaggerating. It really does feel that much lighter. The 40 is the one to have, without doubt, unless you live in a really cold, snowy climate and you need that X-Drive traction, this car is the one to have. The i4 isn't perfect though. It is built on the 3 Series platform, so it's not on an all-electric platform from the ground up like the iX is, although that's probably a good thing because it's definitely better looking than the iX. And some of its shortfalls, well, they stem to the rear seat. There's just not much room back there for anyone larger than a small adult, really. It's also very claustrophobic and dark, as I'm sure the camera's picking up on a day like today. Although the boot is really big and usable, and if you have those rear seats folded, well, you can get a couple of road bikes or mountain bikes in there, no problem whatsoever. In fact, it's a really usable space, a bit like a Touring. But yeah, don't think of this as a large four-seater. Two front seats are really nice. Once you get back there, it's really only for kids and very small adults. Before I finish this video, let's put it into sport and turn the traction control completely off. Slightly different with this iDrive 8. When you press the traction button, you get the options up there. DSC off, and then you've got to press it again. I'm not convinced that it's completely off but it definitely feels like it gives you a bit of slip. This car also has the regen when you come off the accelerator um, and you can have different levels of that when you knock it over into what used to be sports gearbox in a combustion engine BMW where you get B and that allows you essentially to drive this car on one pedal. So foot on the accelerator, foot off the accelerator and I'm slowing down quite substantially. And in fact, if you time it right, you can just about get away with using the single accelerator pedal for everything. But I prefer it to feel more like a traditional sort of combustion engine car and use the actual brake pedal. You still do get some regen when you're coming up to traffic lights and junctions and stuff. The car's very intelligent and knows exactly what's going on. Or if cars are slowing down in front of you, if you come off the accelerator, it will automatically start slowing down with the traffic, a bit like with the iX. Anyway, we're on a good bit of road here, so we're in sport. I've got DSC off, apparently. 
Uh, let's have a bit of fun. It's a 60 road, so bad conditions. But as you can see, look, not a hint of slip. It really is laying down the power very, very well. Just feels really, really good. I remember complaining about the M50 on this exact bit of road, just saying that it just felt lardy and a bit out of control. But this thing just feels fantastic. It really does. Am I starting to fall a little bit for an EV? Well, it still lacks soul and character compared to a combustion engine version, but I tell you what, this is one of the most impressive and compelling EVs I've ever driven. And that all comes down to the fact that it just feels a lot lighter than 2.1 tonnes. If you told me this was 1,600 kilos, I would believe you. So, very, very impressed. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this rather simple first drive video. The weather, well, it was really against me today, but hopefully I've got across how I feel about this car. It really is the first electric BMW that I've enjoyed in terms of like driver involvement, driver dynamics. It's not perfect, but it feels so much better than the M50. I just, I can't get my head around that still. Does it rival cars like the Taycan? I mean, the Taycan is in a completely different price bracket and that still probably is your purest EV for the purest driver. But yeah, as I say, it's a lot more money realistically twice the money for a nicely specced one and you don't get the range that this car has I mean this has a realistic range of 300 miles which is just awesome so yeah if I had an EV now if I had a charging place at home in a garage and an EV fitted into my life quite happily if I lived on the outskirts of London or whatever I would definitely be looking at one of these Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you at another video very, very soon. Take it easy.